Hello everyone and welcome to another Affinity Designer tutorial. This time I'm going to teach you how to create a modern looking icon. Now a lot of icons today have what is known as knockout space. So here, see how the pixels are not actually touching these other pixels? The space in between them are knockouts and the distance between the, that negative space is the same distance here and here as well. So I'm going to teach you how to do something similar in Affinity Designer. Now you cannot currently create knockouts so I'm going to teach you a workaround. How it, um, the feature is however on the roadmap so we'll be able to see knockouts sometime before version 2. Okay, now I made some notes to myself. There are two different ways that you can currently create knockouts. You can do it from subtracting or dividing. And for subtracting, I said you could do it from shape. I'm not going to do each step individually. I'm going to just show you um, doing the dividing method. And you can also do from lines. And then the same with dividing. You can divide from shape or you can divide by lines. Alright, so dividing by shape have two objects overlapping each other. You may use a fill and stroke if desired. And then copy everything here and hide the copy. Alright, so first let me just create a shape. I'm going to give it a stroke. I could do that, or I could be a little more clever, use a round corner tool, and use the, oh, not that one, that, and now big corners, and just delete that extra node. I right, now add another shape, oh, and I have snapping enabled. Okay, now it says copy everything. So I'm going to drag this to the new layer button to make a copy. Hide this one. Expand the top object so it becomes a fill. So I'm going to go to layer, expand stroke. And now this part that was a stroke is now a fill, but I still have this other fill which is separate from this new fill. Step 3. With that new fill separating itself from the other, you can delete the old. So in other case, so in other words, I'm going to hold alt and select this fill underneath that I just showed you and delete it. Step 4. Now you can divide everything and delete any remaining areas as that need deletion. You may also remove or swap any strokes. So, I'm going to do this. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this stroke now. Now with both of these selected, I'm going to press divide. So I'm going to delete that. And now you can delete each shape individually. Delete that. And see what I just did? And the reason I told you to divide rather than subtract is because now you can change each color individually. If you just subtracted, then both of these would be the same color. I mean, who knows, maybe that's the look you want to go for. Well, but if you want more control, then dividing would be better. And now, let's do it this other way. We're now going to divide from lines. All right, so I have two objects over... Oh, wait a minute, let me delete both these layers now. I'll create a new one. Have two objects overlapping each other. You may use a fill and stroke if desired for the bottom object. 
copy everything. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all these steps. I'm going to just show you um, a fast way you can do this. You know, I already know I'm not going to have a stroke, so I'm going to get rid of that stroke. And with a fill, I'll just have like a grayish so you can see what's going on. I use that clever trick to make a shop corner again. Big corners. Okay, now here is the easy part. You can just take a line. Increase the stroke. Now, now if you want to have this have um, the negative space be the same length, um, you know, every, in every area you have on your icon, just have it be the same stroke size, and that's why we copy the layer. That's so if we do want to go and make changes, we have the original copy before we converted the stroke to a fill. All right, so I'm going to have the stroke as 2. So, I mean, just for the heck of it, I'm going to do something like this. All right. This isn't really anything. It's just for looks. So I'm going to drag duplicate and make another, and then another. Whoa. Okay. Now I'm going to convert all those to fills. I'm going to deselect that last one. So go to layer, expand stroke. Now select everything. And I'm gonna divide. So delete that, delete. And now if I select all this, you can see it is transparent. So this is just to show that um, you could have the negative space be the same distance apart. All right, now let's get a little more complex. We're going to create, let me turn this to black and show you what I'm going to be doing. We're going to do something like this now. I'm going to have an icon look this way, but all this black is going to have negative space. So let's see if we can create something like that. Okay, so here's my object, and you see that nothing is expanded yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all these paths. I'm going to drag duplicate. Command and Shift will be Control Shift for Windows. And now Command J to make a power duplicate of it. Okay. Now, I'm going to select these two. And just for now, I'm going to add a transparent and fill. So I want these, I want this one to be in front. So with this, I'm going to add a node here and another node here. Delete, delete this one. Whoa, hold it. And add, when I add these two nodes here, I need to break the curves. Okay, now I can delete this one. And you know what? I'm going to remove. The, the fill as well, on this one as well. Now we're going to select this one, add a node here, break curve, add a node here, break curve, delete. Okay, now this is going to get interesting. So I'm going to expand all those strokes. And now I'm going to add them together. Well, actually, I'm just going to add these because I don't want to add those fills. All right now, add those. Now, select everything. And now, divide. Delete, delete, whoop, okay, that's okay, it's a different color.
And there you go. We did it. All right, and that's how it's done. And you can still change the color to each object individually. We still have that gap space. It's the same distance um, no matter how you look at it. But one thing I did forget to do in this step is that I forgot to copy everything before expanding the strokes. So when you're making modern icons, make sure you do copy all of your strokes in case you need to go in and make changes. So you can go back to your original strokes and make changes and then expand the strokes. That's why you have copies. So I hope this tutorial was helpful.